Hello everyone. So in this pre-lecture tutorial to kick off chapter 5, I thought that it would be a good idea to sort of explain sort of where we're headed with this chapter and the means by which we're going to achieve that particular goal. Um, the whole point of this chapter is to understand exactly how electrons are arranged within atoms. Uh, if you recall, when we last talked about the structure of the atom, all we knew was that we have a nucleus and that the electrons are somewhere outside of that nucleus. And we'd also made brief mention of what we call the electron cloud. And so we know that the electrons are in this cloud, but it turns out that we know a little bit more than just that. Uh, eventually, we're going to discuss in class exactly how it is that we know what we know about the electronic structure of the atom. Uh, but believe it or not, in order for us to really understand it and break it down, we actually sort of have to take a step back and actually consider other material related to, specifically, electromagnetic radiation. Um, electromagnetic radiation is basically any form of energy that travels in waves. Okay. And it can consist of radio waves, which are the lowest energy type of electromagnetic radiation, all the way up to gamma rays, which are what we consider to be the most energetic uh, types of electromagnetic radiation. But each of these types of energy actually can be represented by waves. And so in order to really understand how this all fits together, then we have to consider waves and the parts of them and how we relate the different parts to each other. And so here's an example of a wave. Now, these waves have some very key parts. For example, the highest point within a wave we call a crest. The lowest point within a wave we call a trough. Okay. Now, if I follow the wave from one crest to the next crest, that distance is what we call the wavelength. Okay, and the wavelength has its own symbol. The wavelength is represented by the Greek letter lambda, which is the Greek version of the letter L. And it's usually measured in meters or derivatives of units of meters that have been modified by metric prefixes. Okay, now another important property of waves that needs to be understood is what we call the frequency. Okay, now the frequency is the number of wave cycles that travel a specified distance in a unit of time. Okay, so suppose that this horizontal axis actually represents time. And let's assume that at this point in time, one second has elapsed. If I count the number of wave cycles, so meaning wave patterns. So here is one cycle of this wave from here to there, because once I get past this point right here, the wave repeats. So that's one cycle, two cycles, three cycles. And if these three cycles actually travel past the same point in one second, then we would say that the frequency of this wave is three cycles per second. Now this unit of cycles per second is also called the Hertz. So sometimes you'll see frequencies written in units of Hertz. Now, as it turns out, wavelength and frequency are related to each other. Because all waves travel at the speed of light. 
and the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Okay, now if I multiply the frequency times the wavelength, then I will get the speed of light. And so this is one of those fundamental relationships that defines how frequency and wavelength actually relate to each other. So like we said earlier, the Greek letter lambda, that is the wavelength. This symbol here that sort of looks like a script V, that's the Greek letter nu, and that represents frequency. And C represents the speed of light. Okay, now, as it turns out, I can also relate the energy of the electromagnetic radiation to the frequency of the wave. The higher the frequency of the wave, then the more energetic the energy is. And that's given by the following equation. Okay, the energy of the wave is the frequency multiplied by this quantity, which we call Planck's constant. Okay, and Planck's constant is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joules times seconds. So here's another one of those important fundamental relationships. Now it's also possible for me to actually develop an expression for energy as a function of wavelength as well. Okay, If I were to solve the equation that relates frequency and wavelength to the speed of light, I'm going to solve it for frequency. So the frequency is equal to the speed of light divided by the wavelength. If I divide by wavelength on both sides of this equation, then the wavelength would cancel out on the left, and I'd be left with this expression for the frequency on the right. If I back substitute that in to my energy equation, I can also say that the energy of the wave is equal to Planck's constant times the speed of light divided by the wavelength of the wave that represents that energy. So I'm going to demonstrate how to use each of these equations in some calculations that we're actually going to be working on in the next class. So suppose that somebody asks me to calculate a wavelength for a wave that has a frequency of 3.76 times 10 to the 14th, and again, this is an abbreviation for that unit of cycles per second. If I take a look at my equations, it's basically this equation that relates frequency and wavelength to each other. So that would mean that that's the equation I would use, and to calculate the wavelength, I'd have to actually divide both sides of this equation by the frequency so that the wavelength is equal to the speed of light divided by the frequency. The speed of light, as I said earlier, is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. And the frequency I was given was 3.76 times 10 to the 14th cycles per second. Notice that the per second unit drops out, and if I do this math, I get 7.98 times 10 to the negative seventh meters. Okay, the next problem. This time I'm asked to calculate what's the frequency of a wave that has a wavelength. Notice that this quantity was given in meters, so that represents a wavelength of 6.9 times 10 to the negative 13th meters. So once again, I'm going to need this same equation again. Wavelength times frequency equals the speed of light. So if I want to solve for frequency, then I would divide both sides by the wavelength. The frequency is equal to the speed of light divided by the wavelength. That would be 3 times 10 to the eighth meters per second divided by 6.9 times 10 to the negative thirteenth meters. Notice that this time it's the meters 
that actually drop out. And if I do the math, I get 4.3 times 10 to the 20th cycles per second as a frequency for this wave. Lastly, let's have a look at an energy calculation and being asked to calculate the energy of a wavelength that has a frequency. Notice that this is cycles per second as the unit for this quantity. So that means that this quantity they've given me is a frequency and that frequency is 7.66 times 10 to the 14th cycles per second. And so the equation that relates frequency and energy is that equation. The energy is equal to the product of Planck's constant times the frequency. So as I mentioned earlier Planck's constant is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joules times seconds. So 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joules times seconds. And I'm going to multiply that by the given frequency, which is 7.66 times 10 to the 14th cycles per second. Notice that the cycle per second unit drops out. And if I do the math, I get 5.08 times 10 to the negative 19th joules as my energy. Okay, so go ahead and work on the follow-up questions related to this tutorial. As I said, there's a lot to this story, so we're going to go ahead and discuss the whole story in class tomorrow. Uh, if you have any questions, again, by all means, email, and I'll see you in class then.